They say these islands are ancient, timeless, home to the original people of the archipelago. But what if that idea was never true? Because when we peer inside the DNA of Indonesia, we find something unsettling. No single thread is purely native. No untouched lineage. Instead, layers. Upon layers. Upon layers. A genetic tapestry woven by countless migrations, forgotten conquests, invisible erasures. So then, who really belongs here? Across more than 17,000 islands, the faces, the languages, the traditions feel rooted, eternal. But beneath it all, the genome whispers another story. A story of waves, ancient humans from Asia, from Seoul, from worlds lost to time, flowing in, merging, replacing, fading. And the oldest voice we've heard comes from a girl they call Bess, found in a cave in Sulawesi, a skeleton untouched for more than 7,000 years. Her DNA, a ghost in the genome, half of her bloodline matched Aboriginal Australians and Papuans, descendants of the first humans, to cross into these lands nearly 65,000 years ago. But the other half was a shock. An ancient Asian lineage, not Austronesian, not modern, predating any known migration from the north. A branch of humanity that has no living descendants. No modern population carries her signature. Her people, her culture vanished. Replaced by waves of newcomers, farmers, sailors, traders, leaving only whispers in the genes. And so the myth of the native shatters. Indonesia is not a land of origins. It is a land of arrivals, of relentless mixing and forgotten bloodlines. And if Bess's genome is but one lost voice, how many more lie hidden beneath the soil? Unwritten, undiscovered, waiting. Her bones were brittle, her story almost lost. Deep in the shadows of Lean Panning Cave, in the heart of Sulawesi, they found her, a young woman. Buried beneath layers of earth and time, the archaeologists named her Bess. 7,300 years, her remains untouched by the living world. But when her DNA was finally unlocked, it whispered a truth no one expected. Half of her ancestry linked to the first great wave, the bold humans who crossed into Sahul, ancestors of today's Aboriginal Australians and Papuans. That they could understand. But the other half was a ghost an ancient Asian lineage, older than the Austronesian migrations, older than any known farming culture, a branch of humanity, not mapped in any modern population, not Taiwanese, not Chinese, not Malay, something deeper, stranger, forgotten. How did they reach Sulawesi? When did they come? And why did they vanish? The discovery shattered the clean migration models. There were no single waves, no neat timelines. Thousands of years before the famed Austronesian seafarers arrived with their rice, their pottery, their sleek canoes, Bess's people were already here, hunter-gatherers of a world before maps, a culture lost to memory, save for the silent marks etched in her bones, the Toaline, a name given to a culture we can scarcely touch, no descendants, no language, no songs that survived, but their DNA, left faint fingerprints, in Bess's blood. We glimpse an entire chapter of human history, missing from every textbook. And yet, this is just one skeleton, one echo from a people whose very name we do not know. So then, who were these ancient Asians? And how did they simply disappear? There's a place where two worlds collided, a place between continents, between ancient lands, between what was and what vanished. Wallacea, a scattered chain of islands, where sea and land weave an ever-shifting border. Fifty thousand years ago, this was no remote paradise. It was a frontier, and the humans who ventured here were not alone, because buried in the DNA of modern Indonesians and their Papuan cousins lies a secret, a signature from another species, Denisovans, an extinct branch of humanity whose bones have never been found here, and yet their blood runs through the people of these islands up to 5% in some, higher than almost anywhere else on Earth. How? Because here, in the tangled forests, along the limestone caves, perhaps in places yet untouched by science, ancient Homo sapiens met the Denisovans, and they did more than meet. They mingled, exchanged genes, exchanged survival. For the Denisovan DNA wasn't just a trace of ancient encounters, it was a gift, 
immune traits, adaptations for heat, for pathogens, tools for thriving in these tropical frontiers. Passed down, generation after generation, long after the Denisovans themselves faded into shadow. But here's the enigma. Across Wallacea, Sulawesi, Flores, Timor, Maluku, we find the genetic echoes. But not a single fossil. Not a skull. Not a tooth. Not a bone. So where were these Denisovans? What kind of beings left their imprint so deeply and disappeared without a trace? And if we haven't found them yet, what else lies hidden in these islands? We think of migration as a river flowing in one direction, but sometimes the current runs backwards. 3,000 years ago, in the vast blue between New Guinea and Indonesia, something unexpected began. Canoes carved from ancient trees, guided by starlight and instinct, set sail westward. Not from Asia, but from the gray highlands of Papua. Seafarers, not farmers, not conquerors, Papuan voyagers, crossing dangerous straits, weaving through the labyrinth of Wallacea. Island by island, they left behind more than stories. They left their blood. Today, in the genes of Eastern Indonesians, the mark of those journeys is clear. Up to 60% Papuan ancestry, in places like Timor, the Moluccas, and Sulawesi. A flood of DNA washing across the region. But this wasn't a conquest. It was a meeting of worlds. Because even as Papuan sails moved west, another tide was rising from the north. Austronesian farmers, rice planters, boat builders, masters of navigation, sailing south, east, and west. Two migrations, two peoples, on a collision course. And as they met, the past beneath them was not erased. It was layered. A genetic palimpsest, ancient hunter-gatherer lineages, beneath Papuan blood, beneath Austronesian waves, each arrival riding over the last, but never fully erasing what came before. So what happens? When two world-changing migrations meet, on islands where time itself is layered in blood and bone, not all migrations happen in waves. Some come as a tide, relentless, silent at first, then unstoppable, for thousand years ago. Long before the temples of Java, before the kingdoms of Sumatra, they came from the shores of Taiwan, sailing south, through the Philippines, into the vast blue corridors of the Indonesian seas, Austronesian voyagers. But they didn't come as raiders. They came with life, with rice, with pigs, with pottery, with language, and with a new kind of blood, East Asian DNA. Their arrival was no single event. It was a cascade. Over centuries, their boats cut through the waters of Sunda and Wallacea, carrying seeds of culture and genes of change. And with them came a strange imbalance. The signatures of their lineage tell a story written in chromosomes. The maternal line, empty DNA, flowing wide across the islands. Women moving, marrying, reshaping local gene pools. But the paternal line, the Y chromosome, reveals a different tale. Fewer Austronesian men more local fathers, a dance of assimilation, alliances, and survival. In western Indonesia, Java, Sumatra, Bali, the Austronesian imprint dominates. Their languages, their customs, their DNA. Yet even here, the genetic story is not simple. Admixture upon admixture, a tangled web of ancient islanders, mainland Asians, and Papuan echoes. And the further east you sail, the more the tide begins to thin, to blend, to merge with older currents. But here's the twist. For all their power, for all their spread, the Austronesians were not the first outsiders to reach these shores. Not by far. Sometimes, history leaves no words, no stories, no songs, no names, just blood flowing quietly beneath the surface. In western Indonesia, where temples rise from volcanic plains and languages echo with Austronesian roots, there is a contradiction, because when scientists read the genomes, they find a ghost, a signature from a vanished world, Austroasiatic DNA. Once long ago, before the Austronesians sailed, migration swept out of mainland Southeast Asia, carrying bloodlines now buried deep in the genetic code of Java, Sumatra, Bali. You can't hear them. No Austroasiatic languages remain here. No ancient scripts. But in the DNA, the traces are unmistakable. Autosomal signals, 
woven into the very fabric of the population. And one marker stands out, like a genetic breadcrumb. Y chromosome haplogroup O, M95, a lineage shared with peoples of Vietnam, Cambodia, the old heartlands of the Austroasiatic world. How did it get here? Was it a quiet migration? A trade network lost to time? Or an ancient population, absorbed, forgotten? In Western Indonesia, the genome tells a story of complexity, a blend of older mainland blood, Papuan whispers, Austronesian waves, each layer adding to the tapestry, each migration leaving behind faint echoes. And just when this mosaic began to settle, new ships appeared on the western horizon, carrying goods, carrying faith, and carrying new blood. Because then the Indian Ocean opened new doors, the winds shift, the tides turn. And across the vast Indian Ocean, sails appear. Two thousand years ago, strange ships reached Sumatra, Java, bringing spices, ivory cloth, and something far more lasting, blood. For centuries, trade had flowed along these waters. But now it carried people, merchants, monks, migrants, from the ports of Gujarat, from the ancient cities of Tamalakam, from the kingdoms of India. And with them came gods. Statues of Shiva and Vishnu, scripts etched in stone, temples rising from jungles, bearing the marks of Hindu and Buddhist worlds. The culture was visible, the language, the art, the belief, layered onto Indonesian life. But the genes remained hidden, invisible, until now. In coastal genomes, in the DNA of port cities, the signature is clear. Y chromosomes from South Asia. Mitochondrial lineages tracing maternal roots to the subcontinent. Proof of ancient unions between Indian voyagers and island daughters. Not conquerors, not empires, but traders. Men who came seeking riches and found new homes. And while the kingdoms of Srivijaya and Majapahit rose and fell, their blood remained, whispered through generations, unseen by history books, until the genome revealed it. A hidden layer beneath Austronesian, beneath Austroasiatic, now brought back to light. But even as these Indian winds filled the sails, other ships from even farther shores were already on the move. And these, these weren't the last foreign genes to arrive. History speaks of kings and conquests. But not all migrations are chosen. Not all arrivals welcomed. In the last 500 years, new ships darkened Indonesia's horizons. Not canoes of explorers, not traders seeking alliance, but vessels of empire, driven by greed for nutmeg, cloves, pepper, the spice trade, a hunger that drew powers from every corner of the world, Arab dows, Persian caravels, Chinese junks, Dutch galleons, and with them came more than goods, came people, merchants, soldiers, missionaries, slaves. Some came by choice, many did not. And every port, from Batavia to Malacca, became a crucible of cultures and of blood. Today, the DNA of coastal Indonesians tells a story the history books often silence. Traces of Arab Y chromosomes, Persian maternal lineages, Chinese haplogroups interwoven through market towns, even fragments of European genes from the colonial overlords who claimed these lands, forced migrations, indentured labor human lives bought, sold, displaced, and made to mix. But amidst the shadowed past, something remarkable happened. Indonesia did not fracture. Its identity absorbed these layers, transcended them. The languages, the faiths, the bloodlines folded into a broader tapestry, neither erased nor wholly defined by the outsiders. Yet for all these layers, for all the genes from distant shores, there are still older voices, far older. Silent, faint, waiting beneath it all. Because yet beneath these layers, ancient echoes remain. Beneath the temples, beneath the ports, beneath the waves of empire and trade. There is another story. One without monuments. One whispered in the blood. Bess's bones were a beginning. A glimpse into a lineage long gone. A people without descendants, their language lost, their faces forgotten. And yet their echoes remain. In fragments. In ghostly strands of mitochondrial DNA, drifting in modern Indonesians, rare haplogroups, deep branches, older than kingdoms, 
older than the Austronesians, older even than the Papua migrations, 50,000 years, perhaps more, a time when the first humans crossed into this archipelago and began to shape a world that would, in time, forget them, but their blood was never fully erased. Today, in the genomes of fishermen in the Banda Sea, Highlanders in Sulawesi, isolated islanders in the east, we find traces, not of one people, but of many, a continuum of arrivals, extinctions, survivals. No one is purely native. There is no untouched bloodline. We are all migrants, shaped by journeys we do not remember, bound by ancestry that knows no borders. And in this, there is a truth deeper than politics, deeper than flags or tribes, a shared human story, written in ourselves. Yet, even Bess's ancient line is not the oldest. There are whispers of others, other beings, other ancestors. What about them? What about Homo floriensis, the hobbits of Flores, or others, yet undiscovered? What else lies buried beneath the forests, beneath the caves, beneath the very land we walk upon? The past is not dead. It lives inside us. Every cell carries a record, a genetic archive older than any book. In Indonesia, this archive is vast, layered by time, carved by migration, shaped by survival, and now science is learning to read it, not just for history, but for life, because buried in this DNA are clues that can save lives, local mutations that influence how the body fights disease, denisovan genes that once helped ancient humans survive tropical pathogens, now guiding how modern immune systems respond. Genes that shape how medications work, how illnesses spread, how communities heal. Precision medicine is the future, but it can't be one size fits all. In Indonesia, a land of such deep genetic diversity, one treatment may save in Java, but fail in Papua. One medicine may heal one island and harm another. So the genome must be mapped. The archive must be unlocked. Because here diversity is not a weakness. It is resilience. A story of survival against oceans, volcanoes, colonizers, time itself. And this story is still unfolding. Across dusty caves, ancient bones wait. In forgotten graves, lost lineages whisper. In the DNA of every child, there are riddles yet unsolved. And now, with every new ancient genome sequenced, every fragment recovered, we are asking a bigger question, a question science is only beginning to answer. What other forgotten stories lie waiting in the blood?